be here this morning. I'm glad that we're in God's house on God's day. Amen. Not a better place to be than on a Sunday morning than here studying God's word together. I want to thank everyone this morning for coming out and uh, filling your place and and uh, being with us this morning to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What a privilege it is, and we thank the Lord for that. Uh, this morning, if you would, find your Bibles and open up to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah will be reading in ver- chapter 8 of the book of Nehemiah. I love the book of Nehemiah. Uh, it's one of my favorite books just because I love the zeal that they have, that Nehemiah especially, this man of God, has for the things of God. And Nehemiah, even though uh, he has lots of zeal for the things of God, we see that he was just a man, but was willing to be used. Amen? And that's what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for his children uh, that are willing to be used of him in his service and see a need and fulfill that need. And Nehemiah for sure saw that and uh, that need. And then the walls of the walls of Jerusalem, uh, the walls were torn down and, and they re- Nehemiah saw the need. He came back, rebuilt with the people, the walls. And now in Nehemiah chapter 8, where we'll be at this morning, we'll see what they did after uh, the, the walls were rebuilt. So here in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 14, so after this great work, as the Bible says here in verse 14 of Nehemiah 8, and they found written in the law of the Lord, had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seven month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths. Everyone upon the roof of his house, and in the courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the streets of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. The Bible says in verse 17, And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths, and said under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto the, that day, had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. And day by day, from the first unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. Shall we pray and ask the Lord for his guidance this morning? Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and grace. We thank you. Lord, that we can come this morning and just reflect upon thy holy word. And Father, I do not know the needs of the hour, but Lord, you know the need of every heart, of every life, of every family, of every individual here this morning. So Father, I pray you would use your word, Lord, to strengthen us as individuals for thy service and thus strengthen the Twin Ports Baptist Church to be zealous for the work that is before us. This we pray in the name of Christ our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Uh, Nehemiah had such a desire to serve God's to serve the Lord, and he was a man that was just like any other man. He was living his own life, but then one day he saw the great need there was to stand up and fight for that which uh, for that which is right. And I love verse fourteen here in Nehemiah eight. It says, "And they found written in the law of the Lord." had commanded by Moses. Don't you love it that when you read God's word, it becomes alive, amen? I love that God's word is not dead, amen, but it's alive unto me. It's amazing. There, There is one verse in John that I've read hundreds of times, probably over thousands of times, and I remember I was reading that passage of scripture one day, and all of a sudden, I saw something that I hadn't seen before. I mean, it was right there, 
But I was like, why haven't I seen this before? Well, God's word is a living word. Amen. I'm glad we have the living word in our hands. And God's people, they were gathered together. They were congregated together. They had an assembly uh, coming forth. They came out of their homes. They came out of their lands. And they were assembled together just as we did this morning. Uh, just as you left your house and you left your place of your, your dwelling. And you came together as a local New Testament church as we should. And what happened? They found written in God's word. I love it that when I come to God's house, I can find new things in God's word, even though I read it before. Amen. And that's what instruction is all about. And they wanted to be instructed in God's word. And that's what happened. So they were reading God's word and they found written in the law of uh, uh, which the Lord had commanded by Moses and the children of Israel that the children of Israel should dwell in booths. In the feast of the seventh month, I was reading this passage of scripture, and uh, there's like seven, eight times here they mention these booths. Well, the, uh, after studying it out, there is what they was called the tabernacle of booths, and uh, the uh, or the and the, this time of tabernacle uh, of the feast of the tabernacles or the feast of the booths was was a time of reflection. And the children of Israel had forgotten the goodness of God. Why? Because they were not in the book of God. And now what? Now at this time, they are able to look in God's book. They are able to look in the looking glass, the word of God, in the mirror of God's word. And, but only because of the work that was done in chapter 1 through 7. So let's review real quick, if you would, of the work that uh, the children of Israel had to do. Let's do some review back in chapter 1. So go back to chapter 1 of the book of Nehemiah. And uh, we'll start reviewing the work that Nehemiah had before him. And so in uh, Nehemiah, like we said, was a man, just normal man going about, a, a man of God, but going about his normal a daily routine in verse 3 of chapter 1. And they said unto me, Nehemiah speaking, the raiment that are left of the captivity there in the providence are in great affliction and reproach. And catch this church, and the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, Nehemiah says, when I heard these words, then I sat down and wept, and mourned certain days, and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. We see the man of God, his heart is just is, is aching, and he's pouring out his feelings. And he's, the Bible says he is weeping, he's in anguish. He, he is, uh, because of the anguish of his heart, he is in pain. And because of that, he goes to God and he's weeping and he's mourning and, he, and he's fasting and he prays to the God of heaven. Why was he in this emotional state? What, what caused him to come to this point where he was broken down? Well, the latter part of verse 3 tells us, The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. Verse 3 says the people were captive. They, uh, uh, they were of the captivity. And the walls of Jerusalem were broken down. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. What is the purpose of a fence? Well, they have, uh, I believe a fence has many purposes, but... It has two main purposes. And one, the, one of the pur- purposes is protection. Uh, there are things outside that we do not want coming in. Amen? That's why we have fences. Down in Brazil, where we, uh, by God's grace, been missionaries there for a few years now. Uh, but I've uh, been in Brazil for uh, 17 years. And almost every home in Brazil has... I wouldn't even call it a fence. It's more like a wall, and it's about seven feet high, and it's a brick wall made out of bricks and then concrete mortar mortar on the outside of it. And uh, many of those walls will have glass and nails on top of it. That way, if someone tries to climb over, 
there's another obstacle in their way. And then uh, at, in our neighborhood, uh, we have the seven-foot wall in, around every home. And then all my neighbors started putting up uh, wa- electric wires, five, six strands of electric wires on top of that seven-foot wall fence. And uh, our home was the only one without it. So we thought, you know what? It's probably a good thing to put one up too, you know, to match everyone else. And uh, because if someone comes in the neighborhood to, uh, to steal, you know, we're, we're probably the easiest target. So we have all that, a huge wall, electric fence. Some people got the glass and nails. Why? Because there is something of value inside. There, there is that in, in, our, in our yards and in our homes and in our life to us that is of value. Now, the other purpose of walls is to keep that which is inside, inside. Uh, when our kids were growing up, uh, the, the traffic in Brazil is not like it is here, amen? And so there's lots of motorcycles and mo- mopeds and they... Uh, there might be stop lights and stop signs, but those are suggestions. You know, they really don't mean anything. And so, uh, when we were first down there, and we was on those living on those dirt roads, and you know, you have little kids, and you don't want your kids in the street because those motorcycles they go down and ba- back, and those cars if they're backing up, they don't look in the rearview mirror; they just back up. You know, and so uh, you, we want to protect our children, and some. Yeah, We'd be walking around, hey, where's our son? Where's our daughter? You know, well, if you have a fence, you don't have to worry about it. Why? Because your kids find safety, your family finds safety inside the fence, and we don't have to worry about that which is of value escaping or leaving the protected area uh, of the home. And that's why Nehemiah was so shaken up, and that's why he was disturbed here, because that which of that which was of value, the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, had lost its treasure. It had been destroyed. And we see that here in chapter 1, that the enemy, Babylon, had had her way with God's people. And, it, and, this, and the application here for us as Christians is very evident that Babylon, for us that are God's people, if we forget the statues in the word of God, if we leave the safety of God's word, Babylon will have her way with us. And the man of God was broken down and he, he, he was crying and he was weeping because that's what had happened with God's people. She had forgotten her God in the world was able to go into, go into G- Jerusalem, do whatever they wanted in Jerusalem, and, there was, and the people were scattered abroad and had lost all the victories in their lives and in the nation's life because the walls and the gates had been burnt down. So, verse 9 of chapter 1. He's reviewing... Nehemiah is, is reviewing his relationship with God, and he says, But if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and I will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Isn't it a blessing that he was able to say, God's promises that, yes, the walls might be uh, torn down. There is destruction in the nation of God. However, God says, come back. Amen. Turn unto me. Come back unto me and I will restore you and keep my commandments. And and I will bring those that are scattered back unto me. And that's what he said. That's what we want. We want an assembly. We want a place where God's people can meet. And he said, there is... The place I have chosen to set my name there. The Lord has ordained in the uh, age of grace, in the time of the New Testament, He has given us His local New Testament churches, biblical churches, that that is where the name of God should be proclaimed. Amen? And He says here, uh, the, unto the place that I have chosen to set 
thy name there. And God has ordained, God has chosen that uh, we, his people, proclaim God's word on a weekly basis as an assembly called out together from where, from our homes and uh, our dwelling places. We come together and God has chosen the local New Testament church to proclaim his word. And so that's what we're doing here, here this morning. And God says when that happens, there is fellowship and there is stability there in God's house. And Nehemiah said that is what is lacking now, but that is what we want. I, I am glad for uh, the people that God has used throughout the history of the Twin Ports Baptist Church to establish a place of refuge. Amen? Because that's what we need. That's what we need here in Superior, Wisconsin. That's exactly what Nehemiah was longing for in Jerusalem, a place of refuge. And they did not have that. But I am thankful for the, the church that sent out uh, the man of God over 50 years ago to establish a place of refuge that we can have today to proclaim God's word in safety and and thank the Lord for that and why is that because the world shall know he said this is the place I want to restore Jerusalem so that the word know the world knows that you are God's people he says that in verse uh, 10 now these these are thy servants and thy people whom thou has redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. There needs to be a place for God's people to come to to be refreshed. Jerusalem was not for, for God's uh, a refuge, for God's people just to live their daily lives and to enjoy, enjoy themselves in a place of entertainment. But it was a place to reflect upon God's goodness. And because God's people had gotten away from God's word, they were no longer doing that. And that's why the man of God was so, so broken hearted here at this moment. And so uh, chapter 2 I'm sorry, let's go back to chapter 1. So in verse 11, I love what he says here. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. What is going on here? Nehemiah sees the destruction of, of the city of God, Jerusalem. He is burdened that God's people need a place of refuge. There needs to be a place where we can come together, where they can come, could come together and worship God and learn from God's word and, he, and not be destroyed, but continue to have victories upon victories. But they needed a city of refuge. They needed protection. And he was so distraught about it. And he said... I love what he says here in verse 11. He was the king's cupbearer. He had, he had a job. He had his position. And now in chapter 2, he needs to go before the king. He needs to present this need before the king and telling him that he was no longer the, the king's cupbearer because he, there's a job for him to do for, him, for God and for God's people. He needs to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. He needs to head up this work with his work here, but chapter two has not come yet. Did you catch that? He hasn't walked before the king yet. He hasn't requested of the king that honestly had the power to take his life if he if the king wished to, if he did not like the request of Nehemiah. But uh, that's what he was going to do in chapter two. But as he was meditating on the job to be done at, at, that was at hand, he says in the last part of chapter 1, verse, verse 11, for I was the king's cupbearer. He, he was committed to the task at hand. He hadn't even quit his job per se, but in his heart he had already said, I am there. There is a task at hand, I'm going to fulfill it. There's obstacles to overcome, but I'm already there. I was the king's cupbearer. He hadn't even given his two weeks notice, but he says, I was the king's cupbearer. My heart is already in the job. I'm committed to the task at hand. There is a job to do, and we must do it. We as Christians, there is lots that... 
There is lots to be done. But many a times the problem is we do not take time to meditate, to look around, to read God's word, to see the destruction that is around us and use that destruction and, and have compassion just like on Christ of the situation of the multitudes that are around us and do something about the job that is set before us. And he was committed in his heart. He said, I was a king's cupbearer. I haven't even quit my job, but I've quit. In my heart, I've quit because I am committed to the task and we're going to do something about restoring the walls of Jerusalem. And so, uh, and so that's what he does. And then here in chapter 2, let's look down in verse 17. Then I said uh, unto them, I'm talking about the people uh, of Jerusalem, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. And this goes hand in hand with what we were talking about. Nehemiah says the walls of Jerusalem are torn down. There is destruction in God's people. There is a bad testimony and we have become a reproach. And the, what we need to do for safety, for the safety of our, of our nation, is to once again restore the walls, build up the walls of safety around us. Why? That we no longer be a reproach. A reproach to God's people, a reproach to the world, and a reproach, most of all, to the Lord himself. And so verse 6 of chapter... Uh, I think I flipped too many pages there. Okay, so in, uh, so in verse... 18 of chapter 2, the Bible says, And I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, and also the king's word that he had spoken to me. So what's the people's response? They said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. God's people had a mind to work, had a mind to serve God. And praise the Lord for the man of God. Praise the Lord for Nehemiah. But God's people said, you know what? We are a reproach. We're we're picking up what you're putting down, preacher. We understand what's going on. We understand that we are reproached. We under we are also weeping. And there is a need. There is something to be done. And so the people said, let us rise up. Nehemiah, we're behind you. We're going to work. And the, man, the, the city, the people had a mind to work, and they worked. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good, good work. Now, when God's people came together, they united and started working together. What, uh, what happened? Each one did their part. And we see that very clearly in chapter 3. Uh, if you go through, you'll see the names of families and individuals listed. And everyone did his part. And as, as they're working, uh, the, the key word here in chapter 3 is the word repaired. Isn't it interesting that when we say, Lord, we're going to work, we're going to serve you, we repair that which is broken. When we give our lives to God, we start repairing the broken relationships we have. We start repairing that in our own personal lives that is torn down and and in disarray. The the secret holes, the secret sins in our life. Are start to be repaired. And we see that word mentioned here in chapter 3 over and over and over, uh, just real quick. Verse 4, and then next unto them, repaired Merimoth, the son of Uriah, and the son of Kaz. And next unto him, them repaired Mesulam, the son of uh, Berchai, the son of Meshabel. And next unto them, repaired Zadok, the son of Banana. Not, that's not banana, amen, but uh, banana, there we go, amen, I like bananas, okay, <clears throat> anyways, uh, three times mention the word repair in one verse, what, and if you, uh, if you look in this part, each, and this, uh, and this passage of scripture here, about 50 times they mention the word repair almost in every single verse, 
When God's people say, we are going to go back to God, we are going to start working for God, God is our Lord once more, we will rise up, we will strengthen our hands for the work of God, things get repaired, amen? And God starts to restoring. And so we see the process of what's going on here. Though they were, they were weeping and the, woe is me and, the, and we've lost that which is of value. There's no more protection. Babylon had her way with Jerusalem day in and day out. They had no victory. They had no peace. And uh, week by week, they, they were distraught. But now God's people said there is a job to be done. And we will rise up. We will work together. We will come together. And everyone did, his, did their part. And now all of a sudden the joy is coming back. Because that which was broken is being repaired. And as a child of God, it is so easy to leave aside that which is important. And leave aside God's word and, 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 and go away. But as a child of God, that spirit does not leave. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And that spirit draws you back to God's word and draws you back to that which is important. And you're able to go with other Christians of like faith. And week by week, you are able to edify that which was broken. And you're able to rebuild that which was destroyed. And what a joy it is to be able to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords side by side together as a local individual body. And things were repaired. So as we uh, uh, now join into, uh, go over to chapter 4, I want you to look at verse 14. To keep, the walls are important to keep that which is of value protected to keep that which is of value inside so why should we as a, a christian build up the walls be in god's word have meditate with god spend time with god uh pray with the lord serve our god why why should we do that why should we why is it important that we come to church why is it important that we maintain a place uh, a local new testament church where we can uh, where we can come together and meet. Why is it important that, that we do that? Well, verse 14 of chapter four, of 4. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, be not afraid of them, talking about the enemy, talking about the opposition. He says, be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, in your houses. Amen. Why is it that we should come together? Why is it that we should come on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, a Wednesday, Wednesday evening? I, and the reason is every time we come together and we congregate together, we meet together, we are fighting. We are fighting for our sons. We are fighting for our daughters. We are fighting for the future of the Twin Ports Baptist Church. Uh, uh, you, you say, I love the Twin Ports Baptist Church. I love that we've been here, you know, 50 years. I'm glad there's a place that's preached God's word. I'm glad there's a place that's strong on the pure word of God, the inspired word of God. And I love that. Well, what about 50 years from now? How are we going to have a church that is in Superior, Wisconsin, if the Lord uh, tarries his coming? How is it that there's going to still be an established Local New Testament church that is preaching God's word, that is singing praises unto God. You say, I love coming to Twin Ports Baptist Church, and I love the choir, and I, uh, I think that glorifies God. And I think it, the hymnal singing is a, a sweet sacrifice and Savior uh, to the Lord. And, and, and I, I want to keep that, and I want to... I wanna, I wanted to be a light for God, and I pray that the Twin Ports Baptist Church is a lighthouse for God in 20 years. Then we must fight today for it. And that's what he's saying. Fight for your, remember the Lord, and fight for your brother. Fight for your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And that's what the God's people had to do. They had to remember. You know, they, unfortunately, they had to go through a time of tr tr troubles and testing to remember how great it was, really. To fight for your children. Because that which is of most value, we will lose if we do not 
we're talking about walls. How do you build a wall? Brick by brick. <laughs> Sunday morning service. It's for me and my house. I, we will serve the Lord. Let's go to church. Hey, that's a brick. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That's another brick. Kids, let's go to church and sing together. That's another brick. Let's go out uh, door knocking, soul winning. Hey, that's another brick. We're fighting for the future of the Twin Porch Baptist Church. We're fighting for our children. We're fighting for our grandchildren. We're fighting for the next generation. And so he said, that's what we're doing. And so in verse 18 of chapter 4, for the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side and so builded and and he that sounded the trumpet was by me. What are, what are we seeing? They're fighting. They say, we love our kids. And brick by brick, we're going to build a foundation. We're going to build a wall so that when the enemy does come, she can no longer have her will over us. And that is important in, in, in our families and in our homes that we build uh, our children up in the admonition of God's word so that when the trials come, and they will. <laughs> when the temptations come, when the storms come. Temptations are those things that bring us away from God. Would bring, draw us outside the wall. But the, the tribulation is that which attacks the wall. And we as Christians must be on guard about both of them. Lord, help us to be in your word so we're not drawn out the safety of, of God's house and, and God's word. But also, Lord, help me to protect the foundation and keep on building the wall and brick upon brick and fighting for that which is right because the trials that come... They are, to, they are trying to erode the, wa the walls and tear them down. So that's why it's so important. He says that we fight. And so they kept on building with a, a hand in their hand. They had a sword. And in the other hand, they were building. Amen. What an example here. They were on the, they, they said, we're going to keep the, the wall from eroding or falling apart. By building, but also protecting. Going forward, but also protecting that which they, they had already built. And in the Christian life, it is so important we do that. Thank God for the victories. And I'm going to remember the big victories. But I'm going to protect my life, my personal life, so I don't destroy the victories I've had. So I don't lose the victories I've had. But also fight for the future. Uh, and, and look forward to the future. In verse uh, 12 of chapter 5, God's people are restoring their relationship with God. And when they restored their relationship with God, look what happened here in verse 12 of chapter 5. And they then said they, we will require... We will restore them and will require nothing of them. So we will do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. We don't have time to go through the whole history. But what had happened here, and if you read the uh, book of Nehemiah, you'll see that they're, as they're rebuilding and restoring uh, Jerusalem, the walls of Jerusalem, the average family was not able, the average father was not able to provide for his dependents. And so because of that, the nobles, those, uh, th those that had a higher position in society in Jerusalem, they were still well off. And so they gave loans to those families. They gave loans to those fathers. And now those fathers are trying to serve God, but... They have the burden of the debt that they owed to the nobles and to those that, uh, of Jerusalem that were of higher status. And so, he, he, and so once they put their hand to the work, 
It was as interesting as you read this uh, book here, you'll see that the average person of Jerusalem started working. And as the and not everyone was committed to the work at first. Not there was those watching, but as the wall started being built. As the assembly started to grow, as the nation started to grow, and they say, hey, as they could see, you know what? There is hope for the future. Guess what happened? Now the nobles that were just watching were just, you know, weren't really uh, committed to the task. Now they started becoming committed. Your work for God is an example to those that will follow. Maybe there are those that are off in the shadows. Maybe are those are the, there are those setting in the back. But when they see our example and they see the victory God has given us, it might encourage them to get committed to the task. And that's exactly what happened. And the nobles started uh, putting themselves to the task. They started working and they were so excited about what God was doing. And they started rebuilding as we had talked about. And as they re- they saw others rebuilding and God restoring fellowship in their family and their lives and God giving them peace, the nobles said, that's what we want. And they were able to restore their relationship with those that they had even loaned money to and those fathers and those families they were taking advantage of. And they said, it was right here in the verse we read, verse 12, we will require nothing of them because we be brethren. Amen. We, we, uh, we're serving God together. Brotherly forgiveness we see here in this chapter. That's what happens when we come together for the, to work together for God, uh, for the Lord. So the task at that time did seem overwhelm, overwhelming, but chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 9, God gave them wisdom. For they, uh, talking about the enemy, for they all made us afraid, saying their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. There is a job to be done. There is a wall to be finished. We cannot do it on our own strength. So, Lord, strengthen my hands. Lord, I don't understand the future. I don't understand how we can do this. But, Lord, give us the strength to do it because the task is overwhelming. And guess what? A few verses later, that's exactly what God did. We see here in verse 15 of chapter 6. So the wall was finished. In the 20th and 5th day of the month, Elu. And look at the miracle that happened. In 52 days. It was a miracle that the whole city had been restored back to a place of protection. And only 52 days, the walls built back up with all the opposition, with the lack of resources, God allowed God's people to restore the protective city of Jerusalem, the city of refuge for God's people. Now, chapter 7 is basically uh, talking about the establishment of Jerusalem. Yeah, if you look through, you was, it's basically a roll call. Uh, of the of the, the citizenship or those that were inside the protection of the walls, those that were members of the city. And I am so thankful, and now we're going to use it as a parallel or application to us today. I am so thankful for those who have fought for a place for us to bring our families together in Superior, Wisconsin. Amen. Thank the Lord for those who have gone before. Thank the God for the Nehemiahs of Superior, Wisconsin. Thank the Lord for the families and those that had said, you know what, there needs to be a place of refuge. Just like the city of Jerusalem was a city of refuge, and Twin Ports uh, needs a, a place, a location where God's name can, wow, I almost fell. Amen. There we go. Uh, where God's house a God's house where God's people can come. You know, when someone's looking for something uh, and looking for God, where do they usually go? God's house. And that's what is needed here in the Twin Ports 
Twin Ports area and praise the Lord for those that had made sacrifices. Thank God for the Christians that made sacrifices in the years gone by. So today we can come with our families. So today we can meet in peace. So today we can study God's word. And we have a membership. As we see, there was a membership in chapter 7. And that's where God's people were at. They did the roll call. They said, we have organized. We have reestablished the city once again. In verse 66 of chapter 7, And the whole congregation together was 40 and 2,303 score. So they dwelt in the city. Uh, let's look at verse 73. So the priests and the Levites and the porters and the singers and, and some of the people and the Nethinims and all the Israel dwelt in their cities. And the seventh month came and the children of Israel were in their cities. And right there, I wrote in my Bible, the end. <laughs> Why? That's the end of the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Now there's the city of refuge is completed. What happened? Praise God, the victory's won. The battle's over? No. <laughs> eight, chapter eight, verse one. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man in the street that was before the water gate. And what happened? Verse two. And Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. In verse 3, And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand in their ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. What happened? There is a place of refuge. So guess what they did? <laughs> they opened up God's word. Twin Ports Baptist Church was established for a specific reason. And that is so we could open the wonderful book of God and grow therein each and every week. Why? Because there's work to be done. Okay, that was all introduction. Now's the message. Message, Amen. Uh, <clears throat> when the book was open, verse 5, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people, for he was above all people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. They said, God's word is what we stand on. It's so important. It is respected. Why is that? Why am I mentioning that? Because few chapters before it was not respected god's word did not have the respect and because god's word did not have the the attention of god's people that which was a value jerusalem was destroyed so they said now we don't want that to happen again and here's the application we are thankful for the refuge god has given us in his word with god's people with our families but we do not want destruction to come before us. So what do we need to do? Get in God's word. Be, fight. Thank God for what he has given us. And that's why the booths were so important. So now we're back at where we started. Chapter 8, verse 14. That's why these booths were uh, that the uh, God, that they found in God's word, this week of the Feast of Booths, this week of the Feast of the Tabernacles was so important is because God wants God's people to realize that there is a task at hand. Why, why Booths? Well, uh, I, I think it's interesting, just point out a couple things. Verse 14, they found written in the law of the Lord, which I commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Now, if you remember in the chapter preceding, we had just read that when they finished the wall of Jerusalem in 52 days, they were in the what month? The seventh month. So now isn't it, it's amazing that uh, God has a timeline, amen? And so on God's timeline, they finished the, repairing the walls of Jerusalem. 
right on the seventh month. And as the, now that there is peace and they have protection from the uh, tribulations outside and they're inside and, and there's no temptations because there's a wall protection around them and there's no temptations from the world and they're in God's house. What a picture of the local New Testament church. Amen. When we come in God's house inside these four protective walls, we should forget that which is outside, forget what's going on and focus on God's word so we can find what God has for us. And when they were in God's word, they found that there was a command that they should uh, follow and that was the feast of the booze in the seventh month. And they said, guess what month we're in? The seventh month. So let's obey. And let's not wait till next year. Let's do it, uh, let's do it this year. And so they started doing it. The Bible says that they took branches of all, um, uh, instead of many trees, make booths of many trees uh, and of thick trees. And so what were these booths? Basically, it was a temporary shelter. It was not their dwelling place. It was not their home. It was not uh, even a church. But as the city came together to meet, to hear God's word preached and taught, they needed shelter from the elements. They needed shelter from the sun. They needed the shade. And so what happens? God said, make these booths. So for a whole week... They would make these temporary booths to set inside them. But after seven days, guess what started to happen? These branches, because they were branches, started to wither away. Day by day, the sun would start shining in. They would start losing the shade, the protection from this booth. Now, why, why, why is this important? Day by day, God was showing them the responsibility of the future. The every day uh, represented, every day of the, uh, in Leviticus, every day of the Feast of the Booths represented a part of their life. So a feast of seven days, the average life expectancy of a, uh, of a, of a person is 70 years, 80 years, Every day, first day, they're thinking, wow, we still have six days. We're protected. Lots of greenery. Second day, you know what? All of a sudden, this light's shining in a little bit. They've already lost one day. We get the picture here. It proceeds. In the last day, there's, the sun's really shining in. And every day, they're sitting there. They're hearing God's word. And God's cleaning them. They think, there is lots to be done. You know what? I've our, I'm no longer on the second day of my life. I'm no longer in the third day of my life. There is things to be done in the future. Maybe I have 40 years left. Maybe I have 20 years left. Maybe I have 10 years left. Whatever it be. But there are things to be fought for. And, and, uh, and that's why it's so important the, uh, that we come and be refreshed and be reminded in God's house. And why is it that we have revival meetings? Why is it that we have week-long revival meetings and missions conferences? It's so we can be refreshed and be reminded and reflect on the things that we must do. Thank the Lord for the Twin Ports Baptist Church. Thank the Lord for the protective walls. But there are still victories ahead. They're, they're, the seven days are passing away. They're now because we have a place of refuge. Guess what? We can go you there for. We can go all to all nations. We can send. We can fight for the future of our of our church. We want to keep giving to missions. Then we must keep fighting. We must reflect. That's why it's important we come to God's house. That's why it's important uh, that we reflect on what God has done. And all the congregation was uh, involved in verse 16. It says, everyone came out. for they, the, they were meeting on the houses, on the rooftops. They were building booths on the rooftops. They were building booths in the street. Why? Because God's word was so important to them. It, because they did not want to go back to what they were before the restoration of Jerusalem. Church family, if we do not want to lose that which God has given us, it is so important that we be refreshed in God's word. That's why we have a local New Testament church. 
And that's why we should be faithful to God's house. So the walls are not torn down. And what happened? They were meeting together. And the latter part of verse 17 says, And there was very great gladness. They were glad to serve the Lord. They were glad to listen to God's word and reflect on their life. You know, it is passing away. And each day, the, uh, uh, the sun's coming through and the tempest is coming through. But I need to serve God and be faithful to him. And so the week passed by. The feast was over. And I love this in verse 8. And day by day, from the first until the last day, he read in the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast seven days. So the, the feast is over. And on the eighth day was a psalm assembly according to the manner of. They started on the first day, Sunday. Went seven days. Ended Saturday. The eighth day, the Bible says they met. What day was that? It was Sunday. <laughs> the feast was over. But when the feast, the time of reflection was over, once again they were in God's word. Starting off the week right saying, we're going to keep on serving God. We're going to keep on being his word, even though the revival's over, even though the week of reflection's over. We're going to be in God's house so we can continue fighting for the future. The time, the Feast of Booths was a time to reflect and then go. Sundays is a time for us to reflect and then during the week, go. It's a time of reflection. A time of reflection requires action. Thank God that we can come. Thank God we have the word of God. But how are we, what are we doing with God's word? What are we doing with what we, the instruction we hear? Oh, that was a great message. How are we applying it? There's a time of application there's a time of booth. There's a time to set and, and glean and receive. But there's also the eighth day. There's also the time to go. There's a time to serve. So a time of reflection requires action. We need to put straight that which was neglected. That what was neglected? God's word. That's why Jerusalem was destroyed. Don't neglect God's word. What is it? What is keeping us maybe in our lives? That's putting us in a position or a candidate for destruction. Is there anything in it that stands in our life right now that's in our taking space in our life where we can see, oh, you know what? The wall's being torn down. <laughs> I need to make sure that my Jerusalem, my spiritual life, does not become desolate. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness and grace. Thank you that we have the Twin Ports Baptist Church and the people, Lord, to come together and glean from your word. And Father, we, we pray that, that that would be important to us, that we would be glad about it. And Father, we pray this morning that maybe uh, we have remembered this morning that there are some things that are lacking in our lives, or maybe we just haven't been excited about going to God's house as we should. Maybe we, we come and we receive, but then we do not go. We reflect on your goodness, but then we do not, uh, we do not reciprocate it with action. So, Father, I pray, Lord, this morning that you would have your will and way. Lord, if someone needs to come and ask, uh, uh, just reflect on what you've done. You allow them to do that this morning at the altar. But also, if we need to come and deal with you, you would have your will and way in this hour. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. As we stand to our feet.